This is Logitech's new MX mechanical keyboard. Now before we begin, this video is sponsored by Logitech. Let's first talk about the look and feel of the keyboard. This wireless keyboard from Logitech, simply put, looks great. Like I have no qualms or complaints about it. It's elegant yet tasteful, and it's got this two-tone black and gray finish throughout that looks sleek on the silver metal backing. This two-tone carries over from the frame to the actual keycaps as well. There's a decent amount of weight to it as well, so you know it won't move around while you're typing. I also like that Logitech keyboards come with this built-in flip stand, not to mention the hinge is quite well made. Sometimes these things tend to break, like I've had these things break on other keyboards of mine, but having this slight incline helps with ergonomics quite a bit. Your wrists aren't bent while you're trying to type and they can lie in their natural position. I also don't know why every keyboard just doesn't do this. It makes typing so much easier. I do also like that the keyboard has rubber padding on the bottom and on the stands. This allows it to be nice and planted while you're using it. In terms of feel, there's just something special about typing on a mechanical keyboard that I find extremely satisfying. This kind of illuminates both your sense of touch as well as hearing. So when you're typing, you get both a physical acknowledgement through your fingers, as well as an audible confirmation, which allows a comfortable typing experience that feels a lot more precise. Now, if you have decided you wanna experience this for yourself, you're going to be presented with several choices. Logitech themselves offer several different choices you need to make. So let's quickly take a look at those and see if we can help you make a decision here. All right, first and foremost, you wanna answer the question, are you getting the regular sized MX Mechanical or the MX Mechanical Mini? Now the regular Mechanical is a full size keyboard with a number pad, whereas the Mini packs in the basics that you need without the number pad. My personal recommendation is unless you know for a fact you're gonna need that number pad, like let's say you're an accountant or somebody who's writing code or somebody who uses numbers often and you really like having that number pad there, and if you do, then you'd probably know who you are. If you're not in that category, I'd probably recommend just going with the mini because the larger one just gets a little bit too wide. Like if you see here on my desk, it's it just pushes your mouse out even further away from your body. So when you're kind of using it, it just feels less ergonomic. Whereas the mini kind of shifts down and it allows you to keep your hands closer together. And it just makes using your keyboard and mouse together an easier experience. Okay, now for the tricky part. On Logitech's website, you're gonna be presented with three different switch options if you wanted to pick up this keyboard. The first being a linear switch. These are also known as red switches in the mechanical world. They are the simplest in terms of operation and they go basically up and down without any tactile feedback or a clicky noise. It is also your quietest keyboard. So this would work really well for offices, bedrooms, or any space where there's other people around and you just don't wanna to make too much noise or irritate anybody around you. These switches also have rapid actuation, which basically means they're your quickest keyboard out of the three options, and they're gonna be the best option for you if you are gaming. Next up is the clicky switch. Now, this is also known as a blue switch. Now, these offer quite a distinct sound when they are pressed, and these are great for people who want an indication that a key has actually been pressed. Now, because of how loud this keyboard can actually get, you definitely don't want this anywhere around where people are sleeping or in an office setting. But I gotta say, the noise is quite quite satisfying in terms of feel. It's probably the best feeling, but over time, if I gotta be honest, the constant clicky sound can get quite loud and sometimes it actually inhibits my thought process. Next up is the tactile quiet. Now these are also known as brown switches. They provide tactile feedback just like the last switch we talked about with a noticeable bump, but without the clicky sound. So this is kind of like the middle ground or best of both worlds if you have it. You get a decent enough sound, not as satisfying as the clicky that we talked about earlier, but also not as loud and high pitched as the clicky keyboard. So this would be totally fine for offices and quiet spaces as well. And I'd say these are pretty much ideal for typing. If you're undecided and are the average person that the tactile keyboard is probably the safest bet. All right, so just so you guys can see the difference between all these keyboards, I'm gonna play this back right now for you guys to hear the sound that each of these keyboards make.
Okay, next I quickly wanna go over this next peripheral that's sitting here on the side, and that is the Logitech MX3S. Now, as the name signifies, it's an S model, so basically it's a refresh to the already wildly popular Logitech MX3. This is the mouse that I've been using for quite some time now. Now, they just updated this mouse with a refresh model, and I gotta say, there's one thing that really got me excited that I love about this mouse, and I don't think I can go back to the MX Master 3 anymore. The buttons are actually 90% less noisier than the previous generation. Just listen to the difference here. So that sort of click just feels so good to use. It's not even about the sound, because I'll be honest, the sound was never an issue for me with like the MX Master 3. It's a feeling of it that I really like. They also added their most precise sensor to date with 8,000 DPI for a better responsiveness uh, experience that would even work well on grass. Sorry, glass. Actually. It works. Success. Other than that, I still really like their implementation of the scroll wheel they have here. It's machine steel, but you get that soft gear feeling that I talked about earlier. You also get up to 70 days on a full charge and you can do a one minute quick charge for three hours of battery life if you ever need it in a pinch. Overall, I love the shape and comfort of this mouse as I did with all previous models of it. And I personally think that it's the best mouse that you can pick up if you wanna get the best of feel, ergonomics, control, and productivity features. Okay, productivity features. I've mentioned this a few times. What exactly do I mean? Now, what actually makes these keyboards and mice productive? Well, other than the actual typing or clicking experience and feel that we just discussed, Logitech has done a stellar job when it comes to their software integration. And I believe that's what makes these keyboards and mice a bar above the rest. Now, Logitech has an app called Options, and basically you can download it for free and it allows you to custom map certain keys. So for example, something that was bothering me when I initially got this keyboard was I couldn't adjust the monitor brightness. And there's no actual function key that shows up here at the top that allows me to you know, use it for that purpose. However, what I can do now is go into the app and change whichever function key I want or any of these modifier keys on the right to any other shortcuts or things that I want my computer to do. So for example, I for one don't really use some of these keys on the right side here, uh, like this home and end or page up, page down. So I map these keys to increase or decrease the brightness of my monitor. Furthermore, you can even customize the keyboard and mouse to specific apps. So if you're editing in Final Cut Pro, or you're using a particular browser, you can map specific actions to your keyboard and your mouse. So I can use my blade tool in Final Cut just by pressing this button on my mouse, or I can cycle through tabs on my browser just by using the side scroll wheel. This really helps speed up processes and allows you to work more efficiently, and that's pretty much what I mean by productivity. Now, another feature that I like is called Smart Illumination, which is really well done on this keyboard. It lights up anytime my hands are approaching the keyboard and it turns off as soon as I take my hands away from it. It's quite literally magic. Now Logitech also provides their new Bolt receiver with this keyboard and the mouse and even though you can use Bluetooth on these devices, if you have a lot of electronics or Bluetooth items nearby, it's better to use this in my opinion. Now another productivity feature that I quite like and Logitech has put this in a lot of their products and that is this quick switch feature where you can pair up to three separate devices to your keyboard and your mouse and basically you can switch between them in a pinch. So someone like me who's using a tablet, iPad, uh, a computer and maybe another like a Windows computer that I'm testing or anything like that, I can just quickly switch between each of those with the press of a button. And lastly, as for battery life, the keyboard will give you about 10 months of battery life without backlighting turned on, and you get about 15 days on a full charge with it on. Now, another thing that I do wish that the Logitech keyboards had was Touch ID. Now, I know we're probably not gonna get this because there's probably some you know, legal ramifications there. All right, so let's conclude. Overall, I think these keyboards provide enough benefit for the average person to consider upgrading to them. Having this entire combo and suite really helps with productivity and for the money, 
I believe this is the best plug and play option you can get. It's a solid set of peripherals interconnected with each other with great ergonomics that look great, feel great, and are made with attention to detail along with some helpful software solutions that improve overall productivity and efficiency and it backs up the entire user experience. If you're especially new to mechanical keyboards or are looking for the best one to daily drive, this might just be what you're looking for. In any case, if you guys had any questions about these keyboards or wanted to learn more about them, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope this video was beneficial to you. If you did, please go ahead and like this video and check out some of my other videos, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace.